My little dog wants to say Merry Christmas too. He's dressed up today in a Santa's helper outfit because my little girl picked it up um, while shopping with my mom the other day and brought it home. And she just loves to put him in this. And he doesn't seem to mind too much. <laughs> He's a pretty easygoing little dog. I'm Gaby, and in case you don't already know, I have three kids, ages 10, 8, and 6, and a husband, and I homeschool my three kids, and I am an um, avid knitter and a design hobbyist, I guess you could say, or a, a, a new or amateur designer. Um, I have a few things out there, and I, I'm always working on new designs, I just don't always complete my patterns. Um, but I'm working on that. <laughs> I have a number of things to show you guys. I have socks and um, sweater progress as well as a little doll dress that I made and um, I was gonna do a little bit of a pom-pom demo using the Clover pom-pom maker if you guys are interested in that because I want to add one of those pom-poms to the top of my daughter's um, hat that I knit her the other day. So let's see, let's start a with putting my little dog down and what I am wearing. I am wearing the Andua sweater, I think that's how you pronounce it, by um, Brooklyn Tweed and I love this sweater and it's kind of like my cozy comfort sweater that I wear all the time and I don't know if it's due to the design or um, the yarn, probably a little bit of both. Um, but it has cables all over it, and it is a boxy shape. You knit it in pieces. The front and the back, um, I think, are identical, and just they're rectangles. There's no shaping in it whatsoever. Um, then you piece those together and pick up stitches and knit the sleeves in the round. It has multiple cable pattern um, charts. So it has this main cable here, and then it, and this is centered, and then they kind of go out from there. One thing I really liked about it, and probably part of the reason that I was drawn to the pattern, um, is the hem. The hem is just a um, one by one rib until you get to um, a couple of places here towards the side, and it goes in, and then. Where it meets, that's where it starts going up into the cable. And I thought those diagonal patterns were really cool. So I have it here. And then the back is just the same. Um, it's kind of a boat neck. Like I said, there's no real shaping. It's very simple. Um, so it's kind of a boat neck here. And um, the sleeves also have pattern work on them. There are no big cables in this. This is the biggest cable here in the front. Um, but other than that, it's not too bad. But you do have to pay attention because there's a lot of charts and some of the charts are um, have more rows in them than others. Um, but I enjoyed knitting it. Um, the sleeves are supposed to be, it's supposed to be cropped, which it is, and the sleeves are supposed to be three-quarter length, but I actually made them, my little dog, I don't know if you can see it back here, he's trying to squeeze behind me in the back of my chair. Um, let's see, so they're supposed to be three-quarter length sleeves, which I made them that way, but I think, um, due to my yarn, they stretched out, so I, um, I cuffed them and wear it like that. Otherwise, I feel like it's a slightly awkward length. But I love it, and I wear it all the time. 
Um, so the yarn. The yarn, I was inspired, um, I forget where I saw it, but I know afterwards I saw Wool Needles Hands podcast, I forget her name that runs that podcast, but she had a whole um, like knit along thing where they unraveled sweaters and I had just done this from an unraveled sweater before that. Um, so I know plenty of people have probably done it, but I went to Goodwill and I found a gray sweater that um, I didn't like the shape of, but it's about a worsted weight yarn and it was 50% wool, 50% cotton. I think it was from Ann Taylor. Um, and so it's, it's very soft, like it's next to skin soft. So it's not, um, it has no itchiness that sometimes wool can have. Um, and I guess that's due to the cotton in it. But because it has wool in there, it still has a little more elasticity when you're knitting with it than straight up cotton. And it's got more squish, a lot more squish to it than that. Um, it's also not as warm as a totally wool garment, which I find is good sometimes, depending on where you wanna wear it. Cause I can wear this and not get overheated ever. Um, because it's only half wool, half cotton. So I think that's nice sometimes, depending on what time of year it is. Right now it's December here on the east coast of the US and it is um, rainy. It's a messy, rainy day. And I think the, the weather I dislike the most is how it is right now, because it's cold and rainy. If it's gonna be really cold, I really prefer that it's snow. I like the snow but cold and wet, not my favorite. <laughs> um, I made myself some tea before the podcast today, and I even brought the um, box to show you guys. It's Bigelow tea, salted caramel. And it smells like salted caramel. I don't know if I would say it necessarily tastes like caramel. I put a little cream and sugar in it, and it is quite good. So I would recommend it if you like cream and sugar. I've tried it because um, I don't really like to have a huge amount of sugar. So I've tried it without sugar and it, it just doesn't taste very good without sugar. So it needs the sugar in there. All right, the next item to show you guys, um, I'll go ahead and show you my socks. Actually, my daughter's socks. I am knitting socks out of this sparkly yarn that I had in my stash. Someone gave me a large bag of yarn, and this is one of the items that was in there. So I completed, I can't remember if last time I finished a sock or not. I completed the first sock, haven't woven in the two ends, but it's a simple, I guess they call them a vanilla sock, top down sock with no special design. Um, I did do, I think it's an eye of partridge heel on the heel flap which I have shown before. And then recently I finally started the second, the second one. And I've gotten this far. I have less than two weeks before Christmas. So I'm not sure if it'll be done or not. We'll see. She knows I'm knitting them so it's not like it's a surprise anyways. Um, and her birthday is in February. So maybe I could just wait till then. <laughs> She's excited though. All right, I will show you this work in progress. I think last time I had started my brioche section of my wave shawl. So section one garter, then my lovely mohair section. Oh, I think it's backwards here. And then my brioche simple brioche and in order to keep things simple I did not do any increases in the brioche um, and I actually did a garter section on this side. I think it looks kind of cool to have the, 
the rectangle, and the little triangle. And now I have switched to the deep of the ocean, my deep blue. And this is just garter as well. So I think it's coming along nicely. And I'm on my last section, so it's going to be done before long. So I can't wait to wear it. And my pattern for this one, I got a little smarter on. And so I wrote it, and then I've been modifying it as I needed to um, while I've been knitting it, like on my own tester or something. But look how nice and cozy it is. And it's not overly bulky because of this big uh, mohair section. Excuse me just a minute. My daughter is um, knocking at the door. There we go. Go down. Okay, I'm back. My little girl wanted to ask me a question. Um, I feel like every time I podcast, they can be doing all kinds of things in their room and playing and having fun. And then as soon as I start to podcast, they seem to know it and they come to me. Um, speaking of my little girl, I made um, something else for her. And it's a little doll dress. It actually doesn't go on a Barbie. I made it for um, a doll that another doll that she has that I made her a little while ago. Um, so it's a little big on the Barbie, but I didn't have the other doll to be a model. So it is yep. <laughs> It's mohair in wool. So this lace part is mohair, kind of a bubble skirt thing. And then I combine the mohair and um, a fingering weight wool here in the body. I did a few cables to cinch in her waist. And then I did um, reverse stocking it on the bust. And then I went back to straight mohair for the sleeves and the neckline. I thought it turned out cute. And I think it will fit the doll that it's supposed to fit. Because that doll is um, stuffed and she's just a little, a little bigger than a Barbie. Do you guys do a lot of gift knitting for Christmas? I've, I've done some in the past and I've gotten overwhelmed with it in the past too. This year I haven't done much at all. Um, maybe the socks if I get them done and then this little dress too, um, which is done. I just need to weave it in my ends. Um, and I, I don't think I have much of anything else this year. Oh, a hat. I have a hat that I've knit. In years past, I think the past two years at least, I knit big shawls for people. For um, my mother-in-law one year and my mom. Um, and so that took forever and then of course you're down to you know mid-December and like you have a lot to go and not much time so that was a little stressful so this year I decided just to keep it really low-key okay the last well not the last thing the next thing I want to show you is my progress on my Ramblin' Woman sweater which is not as much as I would like and I'll tell you why in just a minute Okay, so y'all seen all of this. I can't remember where I was when I um, did a podcast last time. But I've gotten down to the little flower section on the very bottom. And I kept getting off on my count. And I ripped it out a couple of times and tried to fix it. But like I would get halfway around and then somehow mess it up and then not realize until the next round that things didn't line up how they were supposed to line up. So then I finally gave up. And I think it'll be okay. I don't know why I kept getting off. 
but like if you shift it off one stitch, then the next round is totally messed up. But I don't know. I've decided not to be that much of a perfectionist on it. I think that this was easier to not mess up on because it was such a clear, um, I don't know, it seems so clear to see what came next. Whereas with this one, it just, I don't know, it wasn't as obvious. Maybe it was because it was a subtle color. Um, I don't know. But that's okay. I don't think it'll be, I don't think your body will really notice. So the reason I haven't finished the body of the sweater, which is what I probably would have done given the amount of time I've had, um, is because my shoulder started hurting. This left shoulder, uh, and a, a few years ago that happened to me, actually on my right shoulder, um, and I'm not sure if it's necessarily knitting induced, but I think knitting might have aggravated it. I, dance as well and I've been using that side of my body to like on the floor to like push up on and so that might have been kind of where the um, injury started I don't know if it's really an injury but the irritation started and then I think that knitting this acrylic yarn aggravated it because it, this yarn is not I mean as you guys know a lot of times acrylic yarn is it's stiff, it doesn't stretch like a wool yarn does. See, like, see, like this, it, it's got more give and bounce to it. And so I feel like maybe that makes me strain more somehow when I'm knitting. So anyways, I decided that it might be best for me to take a little bit of a break from it, which made me really sad because I was on a roll with it and I'm so excited to finish. But for my shoulder's health, I thought it was best not to mess with it for a little bit of time. So I haven't done a huge amount of knitting. I've done a little bit um, of the wave shawl. I've done all of that garter section. A little bit on the socks, um, but I took a little bit of a break from this. I'm hoping to get back to it very soon though, because I can't wait to finish it. I really want it to be done um, like late winter at the latest because I want to wear it before the spring because it'll be nice and warm and cozy but at the same time um, because it's not wool it won't be super warm and because of the colors I feel like it'll help me um, it'll be a perfect time of year to wear it to ring in the spring so I think I should be able to finish it in plenty of time I'm hoping end of January that's dead middle of winter but that's okay at that point in time, maybe I'll be thinking about spring anyways. Um, ah, yes. The other thing I was gonna say, the mohair I used for this is not um, the Rowan Kid Silk Haze that I used for my um, shawl here. And it's definitely, it's thicker and it's more of a cream color. It, actually, I have a huge amount of it. I'm thinking I need to do some other stuff with it. It is not as soft as the Kid Silk Haze, but my mom bought it, um, I don't know where she got it. Maybe a, a thrift store or something? She's really good about finding special things places. <laughs> but she, of course, thought of me when she found it. You can see it's very fuzzy. It's actually meant for a, um, a spinning company, I guess. So St. Andre Spinning Incorporated, made in USA. So that's good. But it is a huge amount of it. I can make like an entire sweater out of it for myself, just out of mohair. That'd be crazy. I'm thinking about doing one of those sweaters where you um, carry the mohair throughout the whole thing and then like change color with the yarn. Oh, that might be cool. I know um, 
A Home Sun House Girl, she did that with, um, I forget this sweater. It was one of those simple sweaters that was popular maybe a year ago, a little less than that. Um, and it turned her like bright speckled yarn that she was using into something much more subtle. And I thought that was kind of a, a cool look. I also liked how when I combined um, this yarn, just a simple sock yarn, it's gray, a little bit of a blue hue, and I combined it with the mohair, and it has this marled effect that I think is cool. So I thought that was really pretty too. All right. The last thing I wanted to do, hopefully you can't hear my kids too much. I can hear them fairly loud. So I've shown you guys this a couple of times. This is my Calvo hat um, that I did for my daughter. And I told you guys I wanted to do a pom-pom on top. And so, um, I found this yarn in my stash. I hope it'll do all right for a pom-pom. I like the color. It is um, yarn from like Joanne Fabrics or something. And it's, or else it was gifted to me. But it's got multiple shades of blue and kind of an aqua-ish color. And this yarn here, this tweed, has some blue specks in it. So, what do you think? I think that'll look really cute. I think a pom-pom makes hats so much more fun. And um, I was thinking I'd demo the Clover pom-pom maker. I think this is like the large size. I'm not sure. It's larger than the last one I used. It was came in a pack of two. This is the bigger one of the two. Just a minute. My kids are after me again. I love homeschooling my kids, but it doesn't give you a whole lot of time alone. <laughs> so it's sometimes hard to squeeze in my videos that they like to do. But you know, you gotta give yourself some time. I feel like as mothers, we dedicate a lot of time to our kids. So it's good to sometimes um, take something for yourself. Okay, so here's the pom-pom maker and it comes apart like this. And um, you wrap the yarn all the way around, all the way around both sides and you close it up and then you cut it. And then you tie a string around it and then you're able to take this apart and then you have your pom-pom. You can trim it up a little bit, but it actually, it works pretty well for getting a round pom-pom. I used to use um, like cardboard to do it and I had a lot of trouble shaping my pom-poms from the cardboard to actually get them to be like a sphere. So these do work better. So I'm gonna run and get scissors because I forgot those and then I'll um, show you how I get started with this and then how I finish it as well. Couldn't find my good scissors. So I'm using, gonna have to use kid scissors. Actually, it's still work all right. I'm sure it'll be fine. All right, so you have your circular pom-pom maker and you open up one side of it and then you just start wrapping your yarn. And you really want to wrap more than you would imagine that you need. It takes a lot of yarn. So you kind of hold it and start wrapping. You just keep on going and going until it's really full. Okay, so now that I have this side pretty full, <laughs> then I close it and I open the other side up 
And then I wrap this side. Again and again and again and again and again. Okay, after you've gotten it pretty full, both sides, close it. And now you get started with your scissors. So you cut right along here and all the short little pieces will stay put in this little contraption. So hopefully my little scissors will Had to get different scissors. So this is the fun part. Let's see if I can make it so you can see it. So you just cut between um, the two little blue things here. And better scissors <laughs> would be good. And so all the pieces just kind of splay out, but they stay in there. So now I have the whole thing cut. It would have been slightly simpler if I had used good scissors, but my scissors were kind of dull. <laughs> so it's all cut. Now I gotta wrap the string around this middle part. So I'm going to use, you wanna use a strong string. Um, if your yarn is not very strong, then you want to use something else that is stronger. Um, this yarn has a um, strand through it that is um, like a, a strong thread, so I think it'll work fine. But you do have to pull a lot, so um, make sure your yarn's not going to break. So you put it right y'all can see. So you put it right in that spot right there. And you wrap it around. And then you'll pull it tight and tie it. Um, I'm putting it between my knees. I don't think you can see that, but so that I can get a grip on it and tie it. Now I've done this before where I thought my yarn was good enough and then I went to pull it like that and it broke. But that's not the end of the world because you haven't taken it off the pom-pom maker yet. So you can always get another string. But you want to be nice and snug because that's where your, your core is going to be. Um, Okay, so I have it on my string, and so now is the fun part where you get to take it all apart. So you're just gonna open it up and continue to snug in your, um, your string. Because so I find that once I start to remove it from the pom-pom maker, um, I can tighten it up a little bit more as I'm doing that. So, now open up this side. Make sure that's nice and tight again. Actually, knot it now so it won't come looser. Okay, and now we get to actually remove the whole pom pom maker. See, it comes apart. And fluff it up, and there you have it. Yay! So, 
So I have a couple of things to cut off, and there's a few little pieces right here that I'd probably trim back. But all in all, it's a pretty round shape. And then I'm going to leave these strands on here, um, the long ones, in order to attach it to the hat. But what do you think? Isn't it nice? All right. All right, I'm just cutting off the long ones, which are my starting piece and my finishing piece. And there we have it, pom-pom. A little more sprucing up, but I think this yarn actually worked really well for pom-pom. It's almost um, fur-like. And I can't wait to put it on the hat. She will love it. It really livens up the hat. Alright, I think that's all I have for you. Um, maybe I'll take a picture of the hat uh, with the pom-pom on it and attached to the video. Um, and I think that's everything. I hope you guys have a really Merry Christmas and um, I'll be back to talk to you guys sometime after that and I'll hopefully have some new yarn acquisitions to show you that I get from Christmas. So, Merry Christmas!